This is section 2.6, combination of functions and composite functions. Let's talk about what it means to be domain of a function, and we've talked about domain before. So when we talk about domain of a function, we're really asking ourselves, what can x be? Okay, so let's recall a couple things we've done before. Remember, we don't want zero in the denominator. Because that would make our value undefined. And remember that we don't want negative under the radical or under the square root. Because that would not be real. So basically what we want is we want under the radical, we want this to be zero or greater than zero. So it'd be greater than or equal to zero. For example one, I want you to find the domain of the function of the function for each of the following. So in number a or part a, I have f of x equals x squared minus 7x. What we're basically saying is, what can x be? We're asking ourselves, what can x be? Well, in this case, I can put x here, and I can have a negative value in here. Negative squared would give me something positive. This would give me some value here, and I'll get a number out. I could put a zero in here, and that would be fine. I could put a fraction in here, and that would be fine. I'd put a positive number, and that would be fine. I could put pretty much anything I can put in for x is fine. So in this case, um, x can be any real number, or x can be anything. So the domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. Any real number would be fine. For part b, I have g of x equals 3x plus 2 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. Notice how we have a fraction for a function. So we want to make sure that we don't have 0 in the denominator. Otherwise, our fraction would be undefined. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say, well, what would make that denominator 0? Okay, and I'm going to put a little slash here because we don't want it equal 0. So I'll go ahead and factor this on. So I get x and x. I get minus 3 and plus 1. So x cannot be 3 or negative 1. So if x were 3, if I put 3 in here, that would be 9 would be minus 6. So 9 minus 6 is 3, minus 3 is 0. That would make that whole denominator 0. So 3 is pretty bad. I put negative 1 in here, negative 1 squared. Remember, negative 1 in parentheses, squared. That would be 1 minus 2 times negative 1. That would be 1 plus 2, which is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. So both these numbers are not good for our domain. So basically, we're saying every number is fine on the number line except for negative 1 and 3. So all these numbers right here are good. All these numbers are good except for the negative 1. And even numbers between negative 1 and 3 are fine. Not the 3. And all these numbers are fine. So if I want to find the domain of this function, I can go from negative infinity all the way to negative 1. I'm not including negative 1, that would be bad. Or negative 1 to 3. Or 3 to infinity. So x can be any number as long as it's in this interval, this interval, or this interval. Okay, I might run a room here, so let me grab this smaller here. Um, part C, I want to see, I have the function h of x equals the square root of 3x minus 12. We have a radical here, so we want to make sure that our radical, under this radical, we don't want a negative number. Because if we have a negative number under this entire radical, then we have an imaginary or not real value. So I want to make sure that this value under here is positive or 0. So 3x minus 12 needs to be greater than 0, which would be positive. And it can be equal to 0 because you can't have the square root of 0. Okay. Go ahead and solve for x. 
we get 3x is greater than or equal to 12. Divide by 3. So x is greater than or equal to 4. So as long as x is greater than or equal to 4, Did I miss copy that? Mm, I did. Okay. So as long as x is greater than or equal to 4, um, we're good. So let's go ahead and shade in that part of the number line. So it'll be from here to here. So it'll go from 4 to infinity. We can include 4 because that's okay. And that would be the interval or the domain um, of that function. Okay, so let's go to example um, D. And the function for D is 3x plus 2. That's j of x, so I'm going to write that down here. So j of x equals 3x plus 2 over the square root of 14 minus 2x. So here we have a radical. And so under that radical, we want to be 0 or greater. So 14 minus 2x needs to be greater than or equal to 0. But, now this entire radical is in our denominator, so we really don't want our denominator to be equal to 0, so we have to disregard this, this equal sign. So we basically we want 14 minus 2x is greater than 0. So under the radical, we want it to be 0 or greater. But this entire thing is under the, uh, or in the denominator, we don't want that to equal zero, so we have to disregard that. So let's go ahead and solve this. So I get negative 2x is greater than negative 14. Divide by negative 2. And when I divide by negative, I have to reverse the inequality sign. So I get x is greater, or x is less than 7. So here's 7. I want less than that, so I want to shade in this side of the number line. And then I can include that. So this goes from negative infinity all the way to 7, parentheses around both. Okay, and then the last one, part E. Is there room for that? I have, um, do I have room? Here. Okay. So I have the square root of x minus 2 all over x minus 5. Okay, so right away I can start tell you that x cannot be 5. Because if I put 5 down here in the denominator, that would make that denominator 0, and that's not good. And also we need to know that x minus 2 needs to be greater than or equal to 0 because this is under the radical. We want to make sure that anything under the radical is never negative. So that would indicate that there. So I'm going to solve this. I get x is greater than or equal to 2. So I have to this domain here. I have 2 and I have 5. So x has to be greater than or equal to 2. So it'll be all the way here. But you're saying x cannot be 5, so there's actually a little hole right there. So we can go all the way to 5, can't include 5, and then anything greater than that. So that domain is going to be from 2 to 5, can't include 5, or from 5 to infinity. Okay, so let's go back to this example. Here's my domain for this problem, for C. My domain for A is right here. My domain for B is right here. My domain for D would be right here. And then E is right here. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video and try the next problem on your own. All these problems are very similar to what I just did. Make sure you can find the domain of each one of these um, functions. Okay, so for the on your own problem, part A, I got the domain from negative infinity to infinity. Part B, my domain was from 
negative infinity to negative 7, parentheses around both, or from negative 7 to 7, parentheses around both, or from 7 to infinity. Part C, my domain was from 3 to infinity, and I'm including the 3. For D, my domain was from negative infinity to 8. And for E, I have my domain being from 3 to 6. I can include 3, but not 6. Or from 6 to infinity. Again, not including the 6. Let's talk now about the algebra of functions, how to find the sum, difference, product, and quotient of functions. So we have here, we have um, notation that we use for the sum. The sum is when you take f plus g and then you have that um, f x. That's just the f function plus the g function. Here's the difference function, the product function, and the quotient function. So how do we combine functions? We use a special notation. Then so we'll go ahead and, and write the notation out for each one of these. And then we want to determine the domain for each function. So part A I have f plus g of x. That means you're taking the f function and we're adding it to the g function. Well, the f function is this right here. So I'm taking this right here and I'm adding it to the g function, which is this. So I have 2x minus 1 plus x squared plus x minus 2. And here's the first function, here's the second one. Those parentheses don't really um, make a difference. So I'm going to drop those because I'm just adding. So I end up with x squared plus 3x minus 3. That would be the f plus g function. Okay. What's the domain of the sum? Well, look at this function right here. And what is the domain? What can x be? Well, x can be anything. So the domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. Okay. In part b, I have f minus g of x. That's the same thing as taking the f function and subtracting the g function. Okay, well, the f function is 2x minus 1. I'm subtracting the g function, which is x squared minus, or x squared plus x minus 2. And here, parentheses do make a difference, so now I'm going to go ahead and drop them, but I'm going to distribute this sign before I do that. So I get minus x squared minus x plus 2. So now I have negative x squared um, plus x plus 1. The domain of this function, what can x be? Well, the domain can be, or x can be anything. So from negative infinity to infinity. The c function, c, oh, c example is f of g of x. This is the product. So I'm taking the f function and I'm multiplying it by the g function. Well, again, the f function is 2x minus 1. And I'm multiplying that by x squared plus x minus 2. Recall from the P chapter that I'm taking a binomial times the trinomial. So I'm going to do is just go ahead and make sure that this term gets multiplied by all this and this term gets multiplied by all that. For 2x times all this minus 1 times all that. So I get 2x to the third plus 2x squared minus 4x minus 1x squared minus 1x plus 2. That gives me 2x to the third plus 1x or x squared minus 5x plus 2. So I combined these two terms and got this and these two terms and got that. Drop down the plus 2 and drop down the 2x to the third. Okay, what can x be here? Well, the domain is all real numbers. There's no denominator to worry about, there's no square root or anything like that to worry about. Okay, and in part d, I'm looking for f of g of x, f over g of x, so f divided by g of x. That's the same thing as the f function divided by the g function. Well, the f function is 2x minus 1. So the g function is x squared plus x minus 2. 
getting ready to end the video, so we'll finish up in the next video.